Now, before I start programming biomes into my voxel game, I need to implement a feature system that will give each biome its unique characteristics. I could start with different world generation features, but I think a simple tree will be a great start. In Minecraft Java, the oak tree was the first world generation feature added towards the game, and I think it will be a great feature towards my Minecraft clone. In order to program trees into our voxel game, we need to figure out how to generate a tree for the game to render. Most games will use models loaded in memory that are displayed many times using special commands in the graphics library or the game engine. For example, Unreal Engine uses instance rendering, handling all of the complex geometry that a tree would normally have. Things like vertices, texture UV mapping, lighting makes our voxel game unplayable when exploring large forest scenes or anything dealing with complex geometry. Plus, voxel engines are already pushing the limits when it comes to vertices making up the majority of the world. In fact, OpenGL provides a command for rendering objects in large scenes with the last parameter specifying the number of instances we want to render in our Minecraft clone. This reduces the overload due to instance rendering displaying multiple objects at once. However, since Minecraft Java does not render trees as individual objects, we must display them using the voxel data we define. We can either generate all of the trees procedurally or have a template structure to load from. I know that Minecraft Java and many other Vox games use a template structure with slight variation. For now, we can use this template as a starting point to generate trees in our voxel game. Going back to our simple Minecraft oak tree, we can measure the wood log, which turns out to be six logs for the trunk. The leaves only start to grow at the third log on the trunk. By knowing this, we can model our tree similar to the Minecraft oak tree. Also, by the way, the trees in our game won't be the same as Minecraft, they'll actually be different. Let me know in the comments below whether we should generate the trees procedurally or have a structured template. All right, moving on with the video. Now that we have the general basis of a voxel tree, here's a clip of me trying to implement it in the game. So now I'm starting to add a little bit of trees into my voxel engine and right now I am using stone blocks to outline where the trees should be at for the chunks and I have the trees set at a position in the chunks that is fixed but right now this is just a test and they're looking pretty good. It looks kind of like the old Minecraft uh, creepy hero brime vibes that you can kind of see over the fog of the missing tree leads but i think this is starting to get closer to how trees are generated in minecraft or at least the features of it right now the trees are kind of generating like at a fixed height i have it up here uh which is nine nine blocks tall right now they are generating pretty much anywhere at the corner of the chunk i was thinking about randomizing the x and y axis and probably changing the block types towards wood. All right, so now I have logs instead of stone for my trees. The trees are also randomly placed. As you can see, they are distributed across the hills. I will probably add a density function because the logs need to have their density when it comes to placing forest. I think that'd be really cool. There is a bug when it comes to the water and the tree but, or the trees, the tree log or the stump. And I don't think trees grow like that, or maybe like trees that work in water. And the trees over here, they're being placed on the hill very well, so which is really good. And again, I think I'll just add a little bit more density towards it. And then next I'll probably start adding leaves. Here's the uh, trees again. And as you can see, I have the leaves on the side. It looks okay. I mean, this is kind of a start now. Uh, looks like there is a bug where there's floating leaves but we'll fix that but the trees now have one strip of leaves or leaf blocks on them and they're also again randomly placed and I'll try to see if they um, not spawn on the water because I don't think trees can spawn in the water like that all right so we have one side of the tree and here's the other side now I'm going to try to make it go all the way around and now the trees are looking sort of interesting or looking like normal Minecraft trees, but the only thing is it cuts off the trunk and the leaves are kind of going in this X direction. Now the trees are literally blocks or voxels. It looks sort of like Minecraft, but needs a little bit more changing. I think what we need to do is kind of break the leaves 
and make it look more natural and to have the stem to go fully through the trunk of the tree. So here's a look of our tree. I added an extra layer and the trunk goes through the leaves. I noticed that it needs to probably filled in, but I also notice on chunk borders, as I can turn on the chunk border, if I move into this coordinate, it turns to two on the X axis. And this means this tree gets cut off, which is not good. And also the same for a lot of other trees. Like as you can see, this tree was cut off by a chunk border, as you can see right here, as it tried to generate. And a lot of the trees that are on the chunk border, they need to have their chunks shared on a, another cakeage or some type of storage. So that way they can load the other half of the chunk. But anything else, I think the tree is starting to look a little bit better. It kind of looks like a pine tree, but I'm going to try to keep it close to how Minecraft renders their trees. And I also try to see if I can turn the leaves a little bit more bushy. All right, so now we have a full tree. Well, kind of similar like how Minecraft is, but you can see the tree has a smaller top and a larger bottom kind of has a cone shape. And you can see the exact same for over here. All right, let's take a better look at our tree. And there's what is going on with the leaves. I can see right through them. It's almost like they're like really clear. This is like really fast leaves and I can also see the trunk very good too, right through them. And let's see. Yeah, it looks like if I can look through the leaves, I could also see like this, the bottom of the water too. I don't see the water. So I think the rendering might be messed up on the leaves. Now I might have to include both face or to turn off the coal faces. So that way I can render both sides of the leaves. So I turned off back face culling and the leaves are rendering with their sides. So they're a little bit more leafy, if that makes sense. And the leaves have a little bit of a artifact glitch. I noticed on the branch, there is a dark spot and towards an angle, you can see it looks like there's no leaf behind these blocks, even though there is. What I'll probably end up doing is writing a unique shader for the leaves or maybe some way to process the leaves to make it more leafy for the trees but anything else the leaves faces they sh should not be rendering like this after programming voxel trees into my new game engine i want to enhance the textures for the trees i think this will give a new visual aspect and making the forest in the game seem unique i do want to give a quick shout out to our amazing texture artist adversary and our game designer team these textures are looking very good moving forward with the development of our voxel game next i wanted to resolve some issues in my minecraft clone dealing with lighting there's a bug when sunlight propagation fails to propagate all chunks in the column. It causes this weird void on the terrain when chunks get generated and slows down the world generation significantly. This issue corresponds to the same weird lighting artifact that Minecraft Java produces in older versions of the game. Now let's discuss why this problem occurs and how we can prevent these artifacts from occurring in our Minecraft clone. Going back to our original example of propagating sunlight, we can see that the sunlight only begins with the topmost chunk being loaded. So whenever the sunlight moves down to a solid voxel, it will set the state to be full. However, what if not all chunks in the column are loaded? Then it will cause the algorithm to stop at the missing chunks, causing a dark effect on the terrain for the bottommost chunk. Therefore, I call this the black hole bug. Now there's some ways to fix this. Now I'll share what I have encountered. I have these dark spots, as you can see over here. It looks like black holes. I call this the black hole bug. The chunks are loading in on the side. And what is happening is the chunks that are loading on the side or the border. They don't have their full column. So they load chunks in that don't have the full column and it causes these weird dark spots because it looks like old Minecraft alpha bugs. And another thing too is that sometimes the chunks you can see through them as you can see you can see the bottom cave which is not good. So let's see if we can try to fix this. 
Now I changed the speed of the chunk loading to be a little bit more faster again. Right now we're not getting any black hole effects, which is really good. And that's what we want because now I'm waiting for the chunks to have their full columns and not to be missing. And you can see the caves, the darkness are only in the caves, which is good. And if I place a light down, it does not cause any weird artifacts, which is another good factor. I also changed the seed type to be random. Before it was a single C type where the world would generate only to that Pacific seed, but now the world generates at a random seed. But I think this really fits so that way we don't have the same world over and over again. We have a really dark cave and the shadow right here. This is the next bug I have to fix but right now. It's doing a good job and there we go. So looks like this is a new bug that I just encountered and a dark shadow goes on the border of a chunk. I find this interesting. I don't know why what is causing this and why is it like this? Yeah, it looks like the unloading of chunks causes this weird bug. Let's see if it loads back in. Uh, it doesn't look like it. Yeah, it looks like yeah, it loads back in, but with the light levels are a little bit messed up. That's kind of odd. Finally, the last feature that I wanted to implement into my Minecraft clone was a height map. Now, before we move on, what is a height map? We can think of a height map with values on the Y axis. A height map normally stores Y values, the X and Z as the index. Now, for Minecraft Java, I could explain all the different types of height maps that are for the game, but I'll leave an article in the description for you guys to check them out. On the side, here's a list of all the height maps in Minecraft Java. However, we are only interested in the world surface height map, while the other is used for other things. Now, why do we need a height map? We need a height map for calculating sunlight values in loaded chunks. Going back to our original problem that we had, a height map can minimize these errors by only propagating from the topmost block in the chunk column therefore making the algorithm significantly faster. Furthermore, I wouldn't have known this without the help of many Voxel developers in the community. Thanks to all. Now here's a quick recording of my improvements that I made towards the game. So I also wanted to add a way to make block updates very fast, such as when we place a light block, it will update very fast. Right now I set the world to dark so we can be able to visualize this and I only set these chunks to light. For example, if I wanted to place a light block at the border of the chunk, I can do so and it updates the chunk really easy. I also found out that Minecraft Java uses this same model. They actually have a model of different chunk builders, which is one is threaded and one is single threaded for single core CPUs. I probably will have that option in my game as well because I think it's just a good configuration for the players so that way we can update chunks without making their game lag. I'm going to go down into a cave system so I can show you that this really works really fast. And if I place a red light block, you can see it updates without any problem. It spreads out without any border problems. And if I change the light block to say a different color, I can place a green and you can see the color actually blends where we have the yellow. And this is being updated real time on the single core. And I find this configuration a little bit more easy than using thread it because if I use thread it, it will update, but you can notice a delay. And that right there is something that can be annoying when it comes to gameplay. All right, so I've been reworking my meshing system here. And as you can see, I'm trying to get everything smoothed out because apparently when lighting happens, there is a time where the chunk borders do not update because it is multi-threading or there's like this noticeable delay. I'm sure there's a way to probably fix that, but I'm kind of testing out whether if this works on a single threaded program or if there's a way to stream chunks by frame. I know Minecraft and similar other voxel engines does this technique. Uh, right now, everything seems to be a little laggy because uh, when I place a block, it updates really quickly, which is what we want. But however, you can see that there is a significant drop in performance 
uh, you can see where it says FPS and it goes down to 26 when it's loading in new chunks, which is not good. So we're probably going to stream chunks a little bit more like 10 chunks per frame, depending on the system or how much the computer can handle uh, chunk loading. So if you're on a low end system, you can use this option. If you want to join our Discord community, I will have a link in the description. To summarize everything, I do want to apologize for the delay in video content as my life gets in the way. However, I'll try to upload as much content as I possibly can to keep you guys updated with the latest development. Apart from that, expect another delay for the next video, for I'm rewriting some parts of the game engine towards stable optimized gameplay. This will be a topic for the next video. Here's my previous devlog if you're interested. Have a good one everyone.